What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Kelvin's Garage. Today, we have a very, very special episode for you. We are going to clean the throttle body of our 2006 Honda Civic. Now, the throttle body is the part of the engine which regulates how much airflow is let into the engine and is controlled directly through the accelerator gas pedal. Now, what happens over time is that dirt, oil, and other contaminants can enter the throttle body and create a dirty buildup inside the walls of the throttle body over time and on the throttle plate, and the result is poor performance. That's why it's a good idea to clean out your throttle body ever so often to restore your gas mileage and your horsepower. I haven't done mine in a few years, so here we go. Okay, so where is the throttle body? Okay, so if we start at the air box here, okay, and we follow the uh, intake hose, okay, all the way back here, okay, it's a little bit inaccessible, all right, but if you follow the intake hose back here, we will eventually hit the throttle body, okay? Now, we're not going to fully clean the throttle body, and we're not gonna remove it, soak it in any kind of degrease or, any, or anything like that, but what we are going to do is just, from the intake side only, clean it, as much as we can okay and usually this is sufficient for throttle body maintenance now in order to do the throttle body cleaning you don't need much okay so all you really need are some microfiber cleaning cloths or any kind of cleaning cloth and some carburetor cleaner which you could buy relatively cheaply at walmart or any other brand i just have the supertech walmart brand because it was the cheapest and it works great now you could use paper towels instead of the uh, rag okay but I don't highly recommend that because what happens is that when you're digging in the throttle body with uh, the paper towel, sometimes little fibers from the paper towel can be left behind in the throttle body. So you kind of want to avoid that situation. Now as for tools, all we'll really need is our nifty screwdriver and a pair of pliers, okay, to uh, unlock some of the hose clamps that are connected to the air intake hose. Now the other thing you're going to need is a person, okay? So if you have a friend, a family member, or associate, what you'll need them to do is to step on the accelerator pedal all the way, okay? So wide open throttle, okay? And what happens is that when you step on the accelerator pedal all the way, the butterfly valve or the throttle plate inside the throttle body will rotate fully and then you can really get in there and clean that up. Now if you don't have somebody hanging around you handy, what you could also do is put a large brick or large heavy item on the accelerator pedal and just balance it on the pedal so that the throttle plate is wide open. But the problem with that is make sure it doesn't slip, okay? You don't want to be cleaning the throttle body plate and then have the brick slip off the accelerator and then that will end up rotating the plate while you're cleaning it, okay? That is, that is a potentially hazardous situation, okay? So you could also use a brick. But what we're going to use today is this very cool tool that I bought. It's called a throttle depressor, okay? And I bought this on Amazon. Okay, and I'll leave the link down below. But basically this tool, okay, 48700 by the Lyle, Lyle, I believe, company. And basically what this very long tool is, is an accelerator pedal presser, okay? So whether or not you have someone with you, what you can do is you can use, set up this uh, gadget here and you can uh, hook onto the steering wheel and then press the accelerator pedal with this tool all the way and hold it there basically while you work on the throttle body and any other uh, throttle related components. All right, first thing you wanna do is take off this little sensor clip here, okay? Take that off, okay? And take off this little cable harness here. All right, we're gonna remove this and put this aside. All right, and then we're gonna take off the air box, all right? So we'll just undo these clips right here. One, two, three, four. That's also pretty straightforward. And lift and remove. Okay, the air box should come right out. Okay, and then we'll take out the air filter, okay, just to put it aside for safety. Okay, now once the air box and air filter are removed, we can actually see the air intake hose in all of its glory. Okay, so we've got this hose right here, and we've also has this hose right here also, okay? So what we'll need to do is remove this clamp and pull this out. Okay, and also if you look here, that's where the hose clamp is, and it uses a Phillips screwdriver, we'll be taking that out as well. But first, let's remove this clamp right here, okay, with my pliers. I'm just going to press and move this clamp aside, like so. And next, I'm going to unscrew this hose clamp over here, okay, you see that? So just very carefully unscrew the hose clamp, like so. It's coming out quite nicely. Okay, so after we undid the clamp right here, so first we'll just pull this away, okay, from the box, okay, and this hose section right here. Okay, so we'll just do that 
I'll do it one-handed. Okay, just like so. All right, so this hose is now out. Okay, and there's gonna be a little bit of wrangling around here, all right? So it's not that straightforward, but just do your best. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this lower air box. Okay, so I've already taken the top off. But to remove the lower air box, you have to undo this screw right here, okay? I th this, I think, is just a little rubber grommet here. Okay, but then there's another one back there, okay? I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in. You gotta remove this one as well, okay? So let me take that off and I'll remove the lower air box. Socket and extension, okay? And this is a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna take off this bolt right here. Okay, that one's fairly straightforward. Okay, take off the bolt over here, lower left-hand one. All right, and set this aside over here. All right, and then I'm gonna reach in and grab that one I showed you earlier. Okay, that one's a little bit harder to access, but uh, we'll get in there, okay. Somehow or another, okay, so we got it right here. Okay, and be very careful not to lose the bolt after you've undone it. Okay, but there it goes, okay. And if you want to just use your hand to manipulate the bolt, okay, reach your hand in there, you can undo the rest by hand, all right? That way you don't lose the bolt. And voila, okay, voila, here's the bolt. Over here, the air intake hose, the intake intake hose, okay, that takes fresh air from the outside. And basically, we want to just twist this off, all right? Okay, so there we go, okay? Pull it right off. Okay, now the air box should be free to come out. Okay, wrangle the box out. We've got this grommet right here. Okay, but we really need to put some upward force on this. Pull this box up and out. Okay, just like that. So, okay, so that came out. Okay, did you guys see that? All right, don't worry about the clamp. The clamp is okay. But uh, all I did is put upward pressure. It was this grommet that was really sticking. Okay, but I put upward pressure and now. The box is open to be removed. Okay, it's free floating. So we'll just pull it out from the front here and okay, make sure the clips are not getting in the way. And we're just gonna pull up and out. Okay, so after some serious manhandling here, I was able to pull the air box out. Okay, so what was happening is that this grommet down here was hitting the frame bolt right here. Okay, the engine mount bolt right here, okay? So I was able to get it out in this angle and now I can pull it out, okay? But it, it did take a little while, okay? And there's a little trick to it, okay? But once you've gotten the whole thing out, it just comes right out like this. Okay, now remember what will happen is over here, you see it's a little bit chewed up, okay? This part of the air box will actually catch against this uh, engine mount. I believe it's an engine or tranny mount bolt right here, okay? And what you'll need to do is just basically finagle it around here so it clears. All right, but, but it's very doable, and once you've gotten it over here, you can just pull the air box right out. We're almost to the throttle body, but not quite yet, okay? But we've got this other intake hose right here, all right? And what we're going to do is we're gonna remove it, and after we remove this, we should have visibility of the throttle body, all right? So let's let's go at it. Okay, now, so in order to do, to do this part, it's a little bit tricky, okay? So if you look at this air intake hose, okay, we've got first these cables here. We can just pop those off, okay, there's little clips here. And then if you look at this hose here, it's connected here by this clamp. Okay, over here, okay? So we need to undo this clamp. Okay, and also there's another hose over here. Okay, and we just need to pop that off, all right? Just pops off just like that. Okay, it's not really connected to the air intake hose. The air intake hose here is basically just acting like a holder for all these cables and hoses and everything. But really, we pop this out, we pop these two out. Okay, and once we remove this clamp right here, we should be able to take this out. All right, in order to access this clamp screw over here, okay, you see that? You see that right there? Okay, what I've done is I've put the screwdriver at this funny angle here. It's a little bit tighter, right? So if you've got a short, stubby screwdriver, that would probably work better. Okay, but you have to get in right there, okay, and then unscrew from here. Okay, just turn that screw, turn that screw. Turn that screw. Okay, now once that screw clamp, that clamp screw is uh, loose, okay, the clamp should be loose now. And I believe we should be able to take this right off. Okay, so just hold on to it and take it right off, okay? All right, and there it is, okay? This hose, intake hose number two is now loosened up. Okay, removed. Okay, remember that these little connections here were just to hold 
the electrical harness and this hose over here, it actually was not connected into the uh, air intake hose, okay? All right, and now this is the moment we've been waiting for, okay? If you take a look here, this is the throttle body, all right? And that is the throttle body butterfly plate, AKA throttle plate, okay? If you take a look inside, okay? It doesn't look too bad, but there is some dirt in here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray it down with some carb cleaner, then wipe it down. Okay, so there is the throttle body and throttle body plate, and I'm gonna come around here with my carb cleaner, okay? And just spray some carb cleaner inside. Okay, make sure you're in a properly ventilated area. Just spray it, okay? Now wipe it down with our rag, like so, okay? Make sure you clean it thoroughly. All right, you can alternatively spray your rag and then wipe it, that works too. All right, but first we're going to clean the outside Okay, of the throttle body. Okay, the outside and the outside of the throttle body plate, okay? And let's take a look here, okay? We've got some, we've definitely got some dirt here, all right? There's some dirt, okay? So do this for a little bit, okay? I'm gonna next spray some on here and I'm gonna do this offline, spray some on here and wipe it down. And then we're gonna open the butterfly and then clean the inside. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is because we don't have an assistant today, we're going to use our throttle depressor, okay? So we're just gonna take this out and set this up. Okay, but this is a really neat looking gadget. Okay, I got it on Amazon. And it's very convenient for if you don't have anybody with you. All right, you can step on the accelerator pedal and you can hold it at certain RPMs, etc. All right, but the engine is off right now and that's how it should be for the throttle cleaning. All right, now if you look at our nifty little tool here, okay, it's got this hook-like area, okay, and that's supposed to clamp against the steering wheel. And then at the end over here, you've got like this ball or rubber ball at the end of the rod, okay? The rod is a two-piece rod. You just screw it in together, okay? But basically what you need to do is you just you just press this against the accelerator, okay? Put some force against it so it's all the way wide open. All right, and then, and then you move this slider up, okay? You move the slider up so it clamps against the steering wheel. Okay, and basically that's done by just pressing this little spring here, okay? And then as I press the spring and move this up, okay? Make sure it locks against the steering wheel. Okay, it should stay in place. And we can see that the accelerator pedal is fully depressed, okay? And I'm completely hands off, all right? So that's how this thing works. The accelerator depressor tool. Now that we've got the accelerator pedal fully depressed, if you take a look here now, we can see that the butterfly valve, AKA Serato plate is fully open, okay? It's fully open and it's holding it open, okay? The electronic uh, actuator system here is working fine, okay, and we can see here, if we look deep in there, that uh, yes, the Serato body is fully open. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna, again, take our rag and our um, carb cleaner and just give it a good spray, okay, and wipe it down as much as we can. Now, we don't wanna overdo the carb cleaner spray, okay, with the Serato wide open, all right, and that's because, um, you know, you don't want to flood the engine. What happens is that if you spray too much carb cleaner inside, you could flood the engine. So you might have a hard time starting or you might get a misfire, okay? So we're not going to completely spray it all over the inside. Okay, but what we will do is get our rag, okay? And then we'll wipe the inside of the plate, okay? And then we will also um, spray it as much as we can with the carb cleaner, all right? So here we go. And if you listen carefully, you can hear that hum of the uh, of the actuator system holding the throttle open, okay? So this is how it should be for our next phase of cleaning. All right, just quickly spray the inside and then wipe it with a rag. All right, so it's gonna be a hard to do this, hard to do this with the, the filming. Okay, but here we are, here's our straw, okay? And just to show you guys for illustration, I'll put it in there, okay, but not, don't, don't overdo it, okay? And then quickly wipe it with a rag. Okay. All right, and take a look at that. Actually, a lot of the dirt wasn't on the plate itself. It was behind the plate on the intake manifold side, okay? On the uh, the other side of the throttle plate, on the throttle body, okay? But look at all this dirt here, okay? So I'm gonna keep on doing this until I clean it all out to my satisfaction, okay? And then we're going to close it back up. Also remember that I did not disconnect the battery, okay guys? So you need the battery connected, otherwise the electronic actuator on the throttle valve won't work okay so if the throttle plate needs to be rotated by the mechanism in here it needs power all right so do not unplug the battery and if you're having trouble getting inside the throttle body what you can do is you can get some old chopsticks 
okay, or some uh, a plastic knife or something, something hard and rigid, and you can wrap the cloth around it like so, okay, and then you can use this to clean, it, right? So this way we can get in more easily and not have to jam our fingers all the way down the throttle body. But if you just take a look here, now we can really get in there, okay, sweeping out basically, like sweeping out a chimney, right? And we can give it a thorough cleaning with our chopstick method. All right, voila, oh my goodness. Okay, once you've cleaned out your throttle body to your satisfaction, okay, we can move on to closing this thing up. And as you can tell here from the orange rag, okay, it's now uh, has quite a bit of dirt on it, okay. It's not completely coated in soot, okay, but believe it or not, this amount of dirt removed from the throttle body will make a ton of difference, all right. They even had to go to a second rag here just to make sure I was still getting dirt out of it. Time to put it back. Okay, so we can now undo our accelerator depressor, okay? All we do is just press this and it comes right off, just like so, okay? And now the throttle plate should be closed. Now that the throttle plate is now closed and squeaky clean, okay, we can start putting everything back together, all right? Okay, so we're gonna put this hose piece back on and it's pretty much foolproof because if you look at this notch, that's built into the hose, okay? That aligns exactly with the notch right here on the throttle body, okay? And also keep in mind that once we've put the hose on to take these harnesses, okay? These harnesses, which are just dangling over the throttle body, to snap those back into place, okay? And so here are the little notches for that. There's one back here also, so don't forget that one. Okay, so let's try, see if we can do this on camera. Okay, so we're going to finagle this hose piece right here and make sure that notch aligns. All right, and Jiggle it in, all right, jiggle it in, just like that. Okay, jiggle it in. So let me see, is the notch aligned? Once the notch is aligned, you can stop. All right, but you see the notch is aligned right there. Okay, and then we're gonna snap these in place. One and two, one, okay, and then two. Then don't forget about this up here, okay? So snap this hose back into the holder spot on the, <clears throat> air intake hose okay like that okay now I also don't like to tighten this screw yet okay because now there's some flexibility what I like to do is snap the whole box in there first and then kind of tighten this and this afterwards all right that way there's a little bit of motion here that you can work with in case you you hit a snag all right but now that this hose piece is in place we can put the the lower air box and the part that goes in like that we can put that all back in after arm wrestling the box uh, for a couple minutes I found the best way to do it is come in at this angle okay come in at this angle okay this thing is going to hit that bolt over there but come in at this angle and as soon as you can try to hook a portion of the uh, box the the cylindrical part okay into the hose area and once you're there you can you can go the rest of the way you can finagle it in there see like so okay but basically that was the key point over there now let's finish putting it in Okay, we're going to manipulate this so that it's back in place. Okay, we're going to make sure that this hose is inside right there. Okay, like so. Okay, we're going to make sure that this grommet over here aligns okay, with the air box. All right, and we're also going to make sure that this air intake here is not causing us any grief. Okay, we'll move that out of the way temporarily. All right, but at this point we can see here that this is kind of aligned. You shift it over if you need to, but align the grommet here. Make sure the air intake hose is inside here. Okay, it popped out, but I'm gonna adjust that and make sure that that mounting point down there is correct. I have to do this off camera, it's too difficult. Okay guys, I was finally able to get this hose over the box inside here, okay? So the trick was, don't connect anything yet. Okay, to connect no hoses yet, don't connect this one yet. Don't connect this one yet either, okay? Just get this one in there first. All right, get this one in there first. Once this is in there, you can kind of move this up and down and then get the uh, plastic part of the box inside this hose, okay? You can wiggle it in and then you can snap the rest into place, okay? But that was the hardest part, okay? I was wrestling, wrestling around with this for quite some time. Okay, then you can do all the rest here, like this hose. Okay, I got the clamp right here, haven't lost it yet. You can do this hose, you can do that grommet and then you can do that mounting point down there, okay? So really, it's just a game of skill at this point. Okay, so we finally got everything in place, okay? So make sure that this hose is in the box here, okay? That we've got our bolt through this grommet here, okay? I've only loosely tightened it now, 
Okay, this grommet here is just a press on. Okay, so make sure you get that grommet around this uh, prong here, I guess, this, this, uh, this bolt or this mounting snap on point here. Okay, make sure you've got this hose into the grommet here and if the hose clamp is ready to tighten. Make sure that this hose clamp is still loose. Okay, we have yet to tighten it, but make sure that the screw is accessible. Okay, and then finally, make sure that that mounting tab right here, we're gonna put the bolt through there in just a second but that that multi mounting point right there is accessible on the box to the body. Okay, at this point we can tighten this hose clamp, all right? Just tighten that hose clamp right there, okay? Okay, you can also tighten that clamp down there, okay? If you see how I have the screwdriver in there, you can get it in there and then start turning it, all right? The hose clamp should not move, okay, the head of it, because uh, there's a part of the hose which keeps it from spinning around the hose, okay, so it's just gonna be in this place right here. Okay, after tightening that inner screw down there, and this one as well, then put the clamp back on, okay. So just take your plier, put the clamp back on and over this grommet area here, voila, like so, okay. And then tighten the airbox screws, okay, we got the one here. And then we have the one down there, okay? Now that I've dropped it in place, that one right there. Be careful not to over torque these, okay? They don't need that much torque, okay? It's a bolt-on plastic situation, so don't overdo it, otherwise you might break the tab. The one back here as well, just give it a little torque, okay? And the box should be now tight in place. Put our filter back on, okay? So make sure it's nice and seated. Then put our upper box back on. All right, very gently put it into place. Wedge it under that. There was a little uh, tab back there. Wedge it under there. Okay, and then clamp it. One, two, okay, three and four. All right, and then finally move this little harness thing back into place. All right, there we go, and there we go, and plug in this sensor here, okay? All right. All right, and that's it. We have just finished cleaning our throttle body. Now make sure the car starts up without any issues. Okay, you might have a little bit of issue here because remember I said the engine is a little bit flooded, okay? So I tried starting it and it didn't really work so well, but that's okay, just keep trying, it will start, okay? Some of that, uh, Carb cleaner just has to, you know, evaporate or, or whatnot. But let's try again. Okay, there it goes, okay. All right, the engine's sputtering, it's sputtering. Got a check engine light, I got some misfire, okay? So this is what I was talking about in terms of the misfire, in terms of the, uh, the uh, carb cleaner soaking the engine, okay? But that's okay, we'll try again. Here we go, one more time. If you need to, give it some gas. Give it some gas, uh-oh. All right, one more time, one more time. A lot of misfires, but that's okay. Give it some gas. Give it some gas. Okay, there we go, there we go. Give it some gas. Give it some gas. some gas all right and it should start to idle okay so there we go after giving it some gas some of that carb cleaner evaporated got processed through the system here so to speak and the engine is now idling okay all right okay just check it out so the idle it's a little bit higher than what it's supposed to be but it's actually not too bad right now but if I rev it up right what happens is that it stays it stays kind of high like right there you see that it kind of stays kind of high before it sinks to its uh, lower position here so it might need an idle relearn, all right? So it might need an idle relearn. But otherwise, it's feeling pretty good right now. The thorough response is great. And uh, you can see here, I still have that check engine light that I said that needs to be cleared, all right? But the otherwise, it seems like our throttle cleaning was successful. All right, so after a couple of minutes of driving, the rough idle seemed to have gone away. And I can actually feel that there's quite a bit better throttle response when I step on the gas pedal. The idle is a little bit weird, okay? So, and this happens typically uh, for the uh, throttle body cleaning uh, because over time, as the throttle body gets dirty, the engine automatically compensates for that and 
ensures that the idle speed stays the same, all right? So now that the throttle body has been cleaned out, the idle speed is a little bit too high, okay? It's a little bit too high. It's being overcompensated because now the throttle body is clean. The engine doesn't know that, okay? And so the throttle now needs to be returned to its normal spot, okay? And that is done by retraining the engine control unit ECU of the 2006 Honda Civic uh, to relearn that process, okay? Do a idle relearn, all right? And I don't have enough time to cover it today, but be sure to see that on the next episode of Kelvin's Garage. But for now, it looks like everything is doing well. The engine has great response, okay? And uh, it seems to be running better, okay? It feels like I have a little more power. So hopefully that will translate into power or MPG. Okay, so I wanted to report to you guys that after about 30 minutes of driving, the check engine light disappeared on its own, all right? So we're gonna take a look at the OBD reader and see what that says. All right, so with the engine on, if we load up our OBD reader app, Oh, it's called OBD Fusion, that's the one I'm using. Uh, and I just hit connect here, it's gonna load up um, the connection with my car, and then we're gonna check out what those error codes said. Okay, so if we go here to diagnostics, it's gonna tell me what happened. All right, reading the permanent codes. All right, so if we take a look here, right, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it says confirmed codes here, P0113, intake air temperature sensor one circuit high, and P0102 mass or volume airflow circuit low input okay so those are the two errors that you may potentially see after you've um cleaned out the uh throttle body the way i did it and you know use some of that carb cleaner and then upon that initial startup you may get some of these codes okay but don't worry uh they are going to clear up on their own all right all right and friends please remember to wear gloves okay imagine if i didn't wear gloves my hands would be chewed up but look at my arms all right so if you can wear a long sleeve shirt that you're okay with throwing away all right otherwise you'll get these chewed up arms just like me all right and that's it if you found this video helpful please like comment or subscribe and if you want to support this channel please use the affiliate links below for products that i showcased uh, on this video and i'll see you next time on kelvin's garage